Okay, so as we're going through the DDL slides, what I would actually recommend is when you're watching this at home, uh, what I would do is sort of go back to our schema, um, take a screenshot of that and that slide and actually open it up uh, maybe on the side or on another screen. So that way, as we go through these slides um, and look at the DDL statements, you would be you can refer right back to the schema and see where we're getting the column names um, and references from. Um, but besides that, we're basically, what we're going to do here is like we have split them into three separate sort of clusters um, where the tables are more related to each other. And we're kind of going to go through uh, each uh, cluster in detail. Um, okay. So this first section here is basically keeping track of the employee, member, and membership type uh, tables. Um, I remember, so we talked about how uh, the library is going to have members. The members are going to have different membership types. Membership types have the different type of rules, um, meaning the late days are allocated, uh, concurrent checkouts, the late fees that they're paying per day. Um, and then the library also has employees who have a certain type of uh, membership. Um, okay, so the so as you're kind of looking at the DDL statements here, they're pretty they're pretty standard statements, right? Uh, nothing too crazy going on. So if we start with the employee table here, uh, you see our primary key is going to be employee, uh, and usually, uh, typically, you'd have that as your first column, uh, your your first attribute uh, that you named in the DDL statement. Then you actually make it a primary key in there. Uh, then our member ID, which is going to be our foreign key. Um, then you see here, this foreign key is, uh, we have that referential integrity uh, being notated here where it's going to be referring to the primary key of member, which is right there, right? So yeah, um, so that's sort of how you would join those two tables uh, when, when they're gonna be used. Um, and then besides that in the employee table, you just have other attributes like job title and hire date. Um, again, just like um, some other attributes that might be needed for employee. Um, okay, and then again, if you're looking at the schema uh, on the side of this, you can sort of see how we've gotten everything. So that's employee member, again, self-explanatory, pretty, self, pretty standard DDL statement here. Your primary key is your member ID. Uh, which is the first one. Your membership type ID is a foreign key here. And this is what's going to refer to the membership types, the primary key there, which is that. Uh, then some other attributes, first name, last name, email address, and so on. Uh, then you have your membership types ID, uh, sorry, your membership types table. That's your primary key here. Um, note, uh, one thing you realize here that uh, is you have the foreign key reference being done in the table that it's going to join to. So there's no there's no foreign key referential integrity statement um, here in membership types. It's just in the table that's going to be using it. So member here is going to be joining to membership types. So that's why we have uh, this statement over here. Um, but yeah, uh, but then membership types, that table is pretty simple where you just have some other attributes title, than the other uh, things that are going to be associated with the membership type. So the number of late days they have, the fee and so on. Um, and okay, so this was sort of that cluster to keep track of employees, members and membership types. Um, remember one of the other key part, key tables in our design was the transactions table or, or rather the item checkouts table, which is gonna be keeping track of those transactions. Um, so you see we had our item checkout ID, we're using that as our primary key. Uh, we had two foreign keys here, our product item ID and member ID. Then you see the two referential integrity statements here. Uh, the product item ID, that's going to refer to the product item table, which you'll see in the next slide and like the product cluster. Um, then you have the member ID that's referencing the member table there. Um, then besides that, you just have uh, the checkout date, then the other dates that are going to be associated with the checkout. Um, and one thing I, I think I didn't mention on the previous slide either, you, you also see the other statements we're putting in here where we're telling it what the domain is. So in this case, these are ints, these are dates, then other constraints such as what's null, what's not null. And typically you can see that in this table, these three columns are going to be not null. And that's 
mainly because um, those three keys are what's used as primary keys and foreign keys. Um, it's really a table design decision on whether you want to have foreign keys be nullable or not. In my case, in, in our case here, um, item checkouts really wouldn't make sense if you have one of those foreign keys blank, where if the member ID is blank, that means the item has been checked out and you don't know by whom. So th those are things we're going to enforce. Again, these are just design decisions and you kind of talk to your interviewer um, about pros and cons as you go. Uh, moving on, uh, last cluster here is sort of the products uh, and then like the three levels of granularity we talked about. Not going to go through, through these in detail, but basically you see the very top level granularity is going to be your first table here, uh, their pro your product line, which is, let's say this is the Harry Potter series. Um, product is going to be your second layer of granularity. That's going to be the uh, Harry Potter part one, part two, part three, and so on. Uh, product item is going to be your most granular, which is kind of a sloppy three, but basically those are the individual copies uh, that are available there. And then if you kind of go through it, you see the same practices before, foreign keys, primary keys, uh, then you have those constraints here. Um, note, also for product, you have uh, three foreign key references. One is to that first granularity uh, product line table here. Then the other one is a publisher ID, which is going to join to this table. And then you also have the author ID, which is going to join to this table here. Um, OK, so if you sort of uh, kind of had paused the video and then uh, looked at the statements in detail, you'll see that these are pretty standard DDL statements. There's nothing too fancy going on besides some non-null non, non -null constraints and then uh, some referential integrity statements for the foreign keys.